Matt and Nadine O'Connor are the public faces of one of the biggest civil rights campaigns in Britain, Fathers for Justice. Not that you'd know it if you followed only the so-called mainstream media, still less if you were stuck inside the Westminster bubble. Politicians run scared of the idea that a child is entitled to both parents in their lives. Prisoners of the mother is always right mentality. But mothers are not always right. Sometimes they're wrong, and even willfully so, playing out their anger, justified or otherwise, towards the father, irrespective of the impact on the children's well-being. But millions of fathers are desperate to be closely involved in their children's lives and are precluded by the family court system from doing so. It is a Gordian knot. Trying to unravel it is Matt O'Connor. And he joins us now. Matt, thanks for coming on board. Thank you, George. Uh, it's a slight infantilization of women, isn't it? Uh, the idea that yeah. in uh, the 21st century, uh, for decades after uh, the marriage has ended, that somehow they're dependent upon a man. Women to the status of victims uh, and to status of being dependents. And I think the, the idea behind feminism that women would be yeah. empowered to stand on their own two feet, uh, to be responsible for their actions. And, and, and I think this idea somehow um, that that isn't the case is fundamentally wrong. And I think we need to uh, really step back from uh, the issues and, and, and look at the whole issue and say, why is it that fathers are still seen in law as being cash points? Well, uh, let's turn to that uh, subject. I, I have become grimly familiar uh, with this system. And I represent many people. Uh, one just last Saturday, for example, came in to see me, showed me all the paperwork that the child maintenance service has been taking a very substantial amount of money from him every month, uh, against which there's no meaningful appeal. The figures are laid down, there's no flexibility, and so on. But the key point is, that he has not seen the child in question for seven years, despite courts regularly saying he ought to have access to the child. The mother has simply refused, and there seems to be no meaningful mechanism by which his rights, I'll come back to that point, his rights or the child's right to see him uh, can be respected. Yeah, uh, and this is not an unusual case. This is, this is common stuff. Um, yeah, I've got a friend of mine whose um, daughter was taken out of the jurisdiction to Scotland. Um, he's, a, he's a train driver. Um, he's paid, I think, somewhere in the region of £45,000, £50,000 over the last 10 years. The girl's now 14. Uh, and, and it's an outrage. I've got another friend of mine who, who has spent over £50,000 trying to see his daughter um, to get court orders that are enforced. The CSA comes along, cleaned out his bank account, taking his money, Friend to take his passport, took his driving license. They have quasi-judicial powers, the CSA or the Child Maintenance Service, as they now call it. Uh, and, and these are really serious issues that if the coin was flipped and reversed, and this was happening to mothers, there would be a national outcry about it. We have um, we, the suicide is the biggest killer of men under the age of 45. We're more likely to be homeless, uh, more likely to be unemployed, more likely to be subject to violence, more likely to be incarcerated, and more likely to be murdered. Uh, on, on many, many, many levels, men and the issues related to men and men's health uh, just really aren't paid any due serious attention by our political classes. And it is uh, indeed uh, ironic. Let me, though, go back to a dichotomy I glanced at in my last question. It is the fundamental principle of the Children's Act that it's the children that has rights, not the parents. Uh, the problem with that <laughs> is that arrogates or derogates to someone else, namely a judge, in a secret court, because yeah, this is not open absolutely. to the public, one may not discuss in public any of these cases. Mm. Uh, it derogates to a judge the right to decide what the children's interest is. Now, I actually question that in principle. We have an unelected, unaccountable, unsackable judiciary operating in complete secrecy that determines what the best interest of a child is. Now, the thing is about this best interest of a child argument is a wicked, 
wicked deceit that lies at the heart of a rotten and corrupt family justice system. And I'll tell you why. Because nobody has kept any records on the outcomes of children who have been for the family justice system. This is not based on evidence. This is based on what the judge thinks the child's best interest is. And as we've seen, with four million fatherless children in this country now, with all the social consequences that flow from that, um, the family courts are fundamentally abusive uh, and out of control. And we, it's just like legalised cage fighting. And um, we need to have a proper um, review and inquiry into their operation. Um, I always say, courts are for criminals, not families. And yeah, mothers who claim there was domestic violence get legal aid. So you have a situation where my constituents, sometimes inarticulate, sometimes uh, undereducated, certainly underqualified, are up against qualified and polished barristers who are being paid for by the state, but the father is there left to his own uh, devices. How unfair is that? Yeah, uh, but it was always the case to some extent. Uh, it was always a case where you, a mother, would qualify for legal aid um, if you tick the box that says there's been abuse. Now, the thing is, um, with the domestic violence lobby, um, abuse these days can constitute financial abuse, which is dispute over credit cards, emotional abuse, arguing in the car about where you're going on the map, you know, arguing discussions like that. Uh, so it's not just related to violence, but also every father is now risk assessed. So CAFCAS, the court welfare service, collect soft evidence, which is yeah, arguments in the household between mother and father, and hard evidence, which is if there's been police reports or complaints to the police. But every father is risk assessed, because they say where it is safe to do so. Contact can take place where it's safe to do so. So the presumption, George, is that you and me are inherently dangerous to our children. And that assumption doesn't apply to mother. It doesn't apply to mother's new boyfriend. It is yeah. grotesquely unfair. Matt O'Connor, Fathers for Justice, I salute you.